Hey everypony, before I get on to the video, I have started up a Discord server, there's a link in the description. Go join if you want to hear what video ideas are upcoming for me and maybe give me some feedback so I can improve my channel. Now on to the video. Well, color me surprised. I kind of expected that I would be finished with G5 videos because it had simply lost my interest. But Make Your Mark Chapter 2 was better than expected, certainly better than Chapter 1. So here I am, doing a review of the first episode of Chapter 2. I will acknowledge that I drew a line in the sand and said that if the comic's explanation for the creation of the crystals became canon, I would quit G5. I certainly have a lot to say about what little backstory we've been given, but I will save those thoughts for my review of Episode 6. For now, I'll just say this. Despite some glaring flaws, these episodes were overall interesting enough that I legitimately found myself smiling and laughing through much of my first watch. It would be unfair to dismiss them as unworthy of my attention. If I can review G3, I can review this. So let's begin with episode 1, Izzy Does It. Oh my eyes, that thing is in the title sequence! So the episode starts with these big establishing shots, so this seems like a natural time to address the animation. I will say this review is probably going to be longer than the others, because a lot of what I say about the animation, the voice acting, the music will apply to every episode, not just the first. Anyway, they probably put more budget into these first establishing shots than almost anything else, but it's already clear that the animation still has a long way to go. These locations don't have nearly the same sense of grandeur as when we saw them in the movie. Generally, throughout the whole series, the backgrounds are lacking. However, it does seem that the lighting and colors are a little less unnatural and harsh than they were in Chapter 1. The bar never should have been set so low to begin with, but there has been improvement. One thing I think improved a lot is the character expressions and body language. Their expressions were more fluid, less rigid, more natural, and yet still exaggerated and cartoonish. These characters are cute! A very important trait of My Little Pony that was lost in Chapter 1 due to their rigid expressions. It's also worth noting that several animation errors that appeared in the trailer were cleared out by the time they actually aired this thing. I appreciate that they took the time to polish out some of those more glaring mistakes. I just wish Jazz's ears had been included in that list. Another problem I notice is that sometimes the movement of the characters seemed unnatural, like for example their flight physics or how quickly they move versus how much they're stepping. So overall, the animation is far from perfect, but it's definitely better than Chapter 1. If we compare this with Season 1 of Friendship is Magic, well... G4 had a lot of animation problems too. I think this is an acceptable starting point, assuming it continues improving. Okay, in the first 30 seconds we get exposed to Izzy, so I'm going to talk about her. In this very first scene, it was already clear to me that something has changed from Tell Your Tale to here. Check this out. Or at this, unless or that, and this piece makes no sense, unless it's upside down. That made me smile. The voice actor is doing so much better here than in Tell Your Tale. There are still some lines that have a weird delivery. But I'm gonna need to go to the Crystal Bright House for supplies! But I think it's on purpose. Izzy is supposed to be weird. Your Majesty! Weird isn't the problem. The problem is when Izzy becomes a shrieking ball of hyperactive energy. Totally blown! Pure! <laughs> Izzy's problem in Tell Your Tale is that she's actually just Pinkie Pie. Do you see the difference between weird, odd, social misfit Izzy and Pinky clone Izzy? I feel like Chapter 2 saw Izzy return to a portrayal similar to what she was in the movie. She's vastly improved compared with Tell Your Tale. In this episode in particular, I like how she's portrayed because they emphasize so much that she's never had friends before and she's so excited to finally celebrate a friend's birthday. Happy birthday, friend! so fun to say. It's sweet. Okay, next thing I want to talk about is the instrumental score for the series. It's not very remarkable. For the most part, it's super forgettable, and the only time it calls attention to itself is when it's being annoying. Mostly I'm talking about their little detective beat they play whenever Zip's on screen. Remember, kids, she's a detective! Yeah, more about that later. The instrumental score falls flat. Okay, next thing is the intro. I've talked about this song before, basically I like it, and my biggest hesitation was that they don't use the iconic My Little Pony theme, but since they use the little musical cue in every episode, I think I'll let it slide. And as other fans have noted, 
The intro is extremely well animated. They really worked to make this thing look nice. So here's another thing I'll address right now because it shows up in every episode. I hate Sparky. He looks so uncanny, and even if he didn't, he's not entertaining, and he gets a lot of screen time. This is a painful reminder that we're watching a children's show designed to entertain two-year-olds and sell toys. I have nothing more to say about him. So one thing that confused me about this episode initially was why Izzy felt pressured to make every pony main accessories? It was a gift for a friend on her birthday, right? I finally decided that this must be her job. It's something I had kind of assumed from the beginning. She must have some source of income, so she probably sells her crafts. And that was implied by the end of the episode. But I wish they had showed her actually selling crafts to ponies, so it was more clear earlier on. Oh, they're addressing the glowing cutie marks thing. That's good. It was weird how long that went ignored. So we get to the song that was released earlier. I like this song. It does sound similar to Pip's previous songs, but at least they acknowledge that, and hey, I think they have a long way to go before I get tired of Pip. Early G4 songs sounded at least as samey as her music does, and that went on for several seasons before they started varying it more. One thing I noticed is that every song in Make Your Mark is an in-world song. The characters always acknowledge that they're singing, it's never just some character singing about their feelings. And actually, I'm okay with this. The songs sound good, there's not too few of them, and they're used in the right places. It's kind of an odd strategy to go with, considering that in Tell Your Tale and The New Generation they do have proper musical numbers, but I think they're making it work. Here's another thing I need to address now because it shows up in every episode. I'll give more detailed thoughts on Misty as a character later, but for now I'll say this. Misty and particularly Opaline are overused. I didn't feel that they were very relevant for most of the chapter. Opaline just sends Misty off to infiltrate or cause general mayhem, and there doesn't seem to be much of a plan most of the time. And I think it's always risky for a show to reveal its big bad too early because that usually requires them to fail in some of their early objectives, and that reduces their threat level. Opaline just doesn't seem all that dangerous anymore. I also don't like her interactions with Misty. Based off the trailer, I thought the relationship was going to be a little more positive, that they were going to have some funny, light-hearted moments and share some laughs together. But pretty consistently, Opaline is putting down Misty in a way that's manipulative and maybe abusive. And there's no positive relationship here, which ultimately will make it less impactful when Misty inevitably turns on her, because it won't be, yes, you were kind to me and you rescued me as a filly, but what you're doing is wrong, and if you don't stop, I can't help you anymore. Now it'll just be, you were mean to me. I'm, it doesn't even matter what the cause is. I don't like you, and I don't want to be with you anymore. This is a weaker narrative. And they take up a lot of screen time without getting much done, and mostly covering the same few notes. First idiot plotting of the series. Pip takes credit for the mirror when she didn't give it to Sunny. She had no reason to do this, and if she hadn't, maybe Sunny would have been more suspicious of the mirror and episode 4 would have gone differently. So that's some bad writing. So I have to acknowledge the continuity error caused by this cart. In Tell Your Tale, Izzy already had the cart by the time she was making the lantern before Maritime Bay Day, but in Make Your Mark, she doesn't make the cart until after the lantern. This is a paradox, and I am now declaring Tell Your Tale to be non-canon to Make Your Mark. Events in Tell Your Tale do get referenced in Make Your Mark, but they're wrong. There have been a lot of signs that there's basically no coordination between the crews of Tell Your Tale and Make Your Mark, and this confirms it. This kind of takes a burden off my shoulders, knowing that I can dismiss Tell Your Tales nonsense, say the glitter cannon, as non-canon. It is sloppy and lazy and generally annoying, because in several cases it feels like you're supposed to have watched Tell Your Tale to get what's going on and make your mark on this point. It looks like they are never going to explain or reference the blanket from the Star Scout Code, which officially makes that the worst Tell Your Tale episode thus far. You can't drop something that big and never explain it. On the one hoof, it's stupid that they can't maintain basic internal consistency. But on the other hoof, it's nice to know that I can just throw out Tell Your Tale. None of the stupid stuff that happens in this show is actually real in Make Your Mark. So there are kind of two conflicts in this episode. The main one is Izzy's creative block. I think the resolution to this conflict is pretty good. 
Izzy unicycles to make a new toy, and that helps her work more efficiently. The other conflict is Pip's creative block. I like the idea. From the start, Pip has been a hugely talented and successful pony who was born with everything going her way. It's nice to see her struggle a little bit, and that's something that will come up in, in a later episode as well. But the resolution to this conflict makes no sense. Izzy remixed one of Pip's songs? Since when was Izzy a musician? And even if Pip posts this and it's a hit, this doesn't solve the problem that she's having creative block. She didn't make this. It seems they just ran out of time in this case, probably because they used so much time on Sparky, Misty, and Opaline. I will say I like the remix. I hope to hear a longer version someday. The last thing I want to talk about is the message this episode seems to be aiming for. Pip gives Izzy the sort of advice we'd expect from Hasbro or Disney. Just copy what you've done previously. It's one of the biggest things fans have been complaining about with G5, so it's kind of meta of Hasbro to include this message at all. And Pip's advice does not work for Izzy. In the end, Izzy has to reject the shackles of rehashing and go for a more creative solution. Is this G5 criticizing itself? That's gutsy! I like it! But that gets undermined by Pip's side of the story. She's unable to use fan feedback and remixing to create something new, and yet that's exactly what Izzy does for her. So any attempt to parse out a coherent message for this episode is undermined by the illogical resolution to Pip's conflict. Too bad. Could have been great. So what are my overall thoughts on this episode? I've talked a lot about the quality of the show as a whole and their pluses and minuses. The animation is better, but it could still improve. And the instrumental score is bland. The songs are generally pretty good. Sparky is horrifying. Opaline isn't right. And Izzy is much improved compared with Tell Your Tale. Overall, despite some flaws, I'd say Make Your Mark is now a much better show than Tell Your Tale. As for this particular episode, I think it did a good job of portraying Izzy and giving her a suitable conflict with a nice resolution, but the resolution of Pip's conflict was just not right. I'll give this episode a 6 out of 10. Peace out.